Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on the video. My name is Ramon and in this video, I'm going to walk through everything you need to get started in ultralight fishing. Ultralight fishing in itself deals with a lot of light line and a lot of light lures. So with that, you're gonna need a rod that you can actually cast out those lures with. Now you can go a medium powered rod if you want light, medium light, but it's gonna be difficult to really cast those really ultralight lures out. So what I recommend is to get a ultralight rod. Now my go-to ultralight rod is the Berkley Lightning Rod, the Trout Ultralight Rod. This is a 6.6 two-piece ultralight rod and it is a moderate action rod, meaning that the bend of the rod is gonna be a little bit more down the blank. The reason why I like this rod specifically for ultralight fishing is because one, I like the feel of the cork. They're usually readily available. You can probably get them at any big box store right now and they're not that expensive. I bought this one for 40 bucks at Bass Pro Shops. You can get them at Walmart, you can get them at, on Amazon, you can get them anywhere. You can get them at almost any big box store. They're really affordable and they feel really light and really high quality. Um, now my favorite length is six foot six inches because it gives me that castability and I can still kind of go into spots with overhangs. I'm five seven, so if you're taller, you might want to get a six foot, maybe a five six or a five foot, but the longer your rod is, the further you're going to be able to cast out. And that's very important when you're dealing with very, very light lures. The next thing is what goes attached to your rod, the reel. Now I like the 1000 size reel. I've seen people ultralight fish with a 2000 size reel and I've seen people fish with a 500 size reel. I like a 1000 size, it doesn't feel too small, doesn't feel too big, perfect for me. My go-to is the Shimano Sienna, very affordable. Again, you can get it almost anywhere at a really good price. The Shimano Sienna normally runs around $30. If you're in luck, you might find one on sale or you can get it on sale through some kind of discount that a big box store might be having. Or you can talk to a local tackle shop and see if you can get it cheaper. It's a nice high quality reel that I generally enjoy. I've been fishing with it for almost a year now and have not had any issues. But when you're talking about rod and reel, in total, you're in for about 70 bucks. $40 for the rod, $30 for the reel and you're off to the races. The next thing is gonna be line. Now, I like to use two pound test on my ultralight setups. I will go up to four pound test if I know there's gonna be a lot of current, like if I'm fishing a river. And you can go up to six pound test. But the reason why I like to go two pound test is when I am throwing lighter lures like this mule fishing jig head, which is 164 ounce, I can cast it further because the line is lighter. The only downside is, is when the wind is blowing heavy, this line is just gonna get blown away. This thing is super thin. So if it, there's some wind, it will carry the line, which is gonna pull the lure. But for the most part, the lighter the line, the better. Two pound test is my go-to. Now, when you are using two pound test, I recommend you tie a U uni knot to tie your line to your reel. Hasn't caused me any issues. The line stays pretty tight onto the reel. It doesn't pull or stretch and the line doesn't break. When I use it, my other method, which you've probably seen on another video, um, the line does break. That took me a while to figure out. But if you're going two pound test, definitely tie a uni knot. That's just my recommendation. You can tie whatever knot you, knot you want, but you gotta be careful when you are cinching it down because if, if you're tying the wrong knot where the knot cinches on the line itself and not on something like a hook or like the reel, for example, your line will break. The line that I like to use is uh, Berkley Trilene. Um, it's just the line that I've been using. It's the first one that I found on two pound test. I haven't found any issues with it. All the line that I've been using has no kinks in it, no defects. So that's what I've been using. It works great. If I do go four pound or six pound, I'll just get some uh, Omniflex, uh, some Zebco Omniflex that you can find at Walmart. But I, I generally stick to mono. Now you can use braid, you can use fluorocarbon. I like mono, especially at two pound test, just for the stretch. If I do hook into something bigger, I have that little bit of confidence that the line's not gonna be as brittle since mono is the stretchiest line. If you are using braid, I definitely recommend you use a leader. And my favorite leader knot to tie is the Alberto knot. It's very easy to tie, it's very minimal. It doesn't take you more than one knot to tie to tie this line together. So the next thing is bobbers. Now you don't have to use bobbers when you're ultralight fishing, but I do like to have them on hand. These are mule fishing um, peg floats. And I also use um, trout magnet floats as well 
But when fish are suspended, when you're fishing through current and you need to have your lure suspended, it's really good to have really light bobbers or corks. So I like to use peg floats. Mule fishing is my go-to and I really enjoy these because they're really tiny. You can see the bite very, very easily with these high visibility floats. The other thing you might need when it comes to floats are um, bobber stops. Now you can use rubber bobber stops, but lately I've been really liking these slip float bobber stops because you can adjust your length as you need to. If you know that the depth of the body of water that you're fishing is more than 10 feet, you can run this higher than 10 feet. And if your guides are wide enough, you can cast this without getting caught in these guides, which is why, again, I like this rod. The guides are wide enough to where it's not getting hung up when I cast this out. So these bobber stops are really good. I like the tiny ones again, because I know the stop itself is not gonna get stuck in the guide. So that's usually my go-to. Now, terminal tackle, lures, hooks, plastics, all that fun stuff. This is when things get real fun. I like to go as light as possible. 164th ounce is usually where I like to play around, but sometimes I go 180th ounce just to get a little bit more finessey. Sometimes I'll go one, one 200th ounce with like a mini trout magnet kit. But my go-to is usually the mule fishing mule jigs. These are super great. They come in a huge assortment of colors as you can see from here. They are very affordable and they are created for ultralight fishing and multi-species fishing. They do come in regular sizes for uh, net rig applications, but these are the ones that I'm using the most. I really enjoy casting these out. They create good action, specifically on real fishing plastics. These are my go-to hooks. I also will use trout magnet jig heads and crappie magnet jig heads. Um, I'll even use Aberdeen hooks when I'm ultralight fishing. It really depends on what I'm using, if I'm using live bait or if I'm using plastics or what type of plastic I'm using. On the note of plastics, my go-to plastics are mule fishing plastics. If you guys have been following along with the channel for any amount of time, you've seen me throw these. You've seen me catch tons of fish on these. I really enjoy throwing these baits. I have the colors to make these little multi-packs but my go-to colors recently have been the um, Karma color in the Donkey Tail Jr. and the Pasture Fire in the Donkey Tail Jr. For the Horsefly, my go-to colors have been the white and the black. The, I mean, white and black are classic colors that um, you just can't beat anywhere. You have something for clear water and you have something for stained water. So these, these are my go-to. Again, I also fish other plastics. I'm not biased. As much as I love mule fishing and what Ethan is doing over there, I do fish other plastics. Trout magnet plastics are a staple in my tackle box when it comes to ultralight fishing. The panfish magnet kit, which is great. This is very ultralight, has a lot of colors focused around panfish. I like throwing these as well. And then same with like crappie magnet, Mr. Crappie, and then big bite baits. These are all great plastics. Um, Bobby Garland, which I don't have on me today, but Bobby Garland's are awesome. Oh, and we can't forget about Berkeley Gulp minnows. These things smell horribly, but they are classic. They do really well when fish aren't biting much because of the scent. I like the one inch size, the smelt color. It's what mimics the local forage here. Um, but whatever works for you, just try different things out. But I really like these Berkeley goat minnows in the one inch size. The next thing is hard baits. Inline spinners are really fun to throw, especially when you're first starting out. If you're throwing them like in the springtime or in the fall, maybe even in the winter, these are really fun to throw. Um, you just cast these out, retrieve them fast or slow or mix it up. These are great, really lightweight lures. These are really cool. These are by 505 lures. He repurposes uh, casings from 22 rounds and uh, pennies and makes these himself by hand and then these are a panther martin and a rooster tail all great inline spinners i really enjoy throwing hard baits a ton you have your rebel crawl your rapala jerk baits and you have your yozuri snap beans you know they have the guggen uh, micro baits now and Ozark Trail also has their ultralight um, jerk baits too. These are really great to throw around. They'll really help you get that bite. They all have great action. Um, this bait right here is actually the first bait that I ever caught a fish on. I caught a rock bass on it and I was throwing it on a mini, medium spinning rod. And um, I ended up catching it in a reservoir from the bank. And it was a lot of fun. 
hard baits are a great way to get into ultralight fishing as well because again you just cast these out and you crank them in and you adjust your retrieve so definitely check out some hard baits as well and then last but not least some hemostat pliers and you're probably wondering why do i need hemostat pliers i have regular set of pliers well when you are ultralight fishing you do come across a lot of small fish and sometimes that hook it doesn't get swallowed but it gets really in your mouth and if you got fingers like mine that are short and pudgy you will struggle to get that lure back out and you don't want to cut the line and send that fish off with the hook so hemostat pliers allow you to really get in there and get that hook out and put it back and make sure that you return the fish safely if you intend to not keep the fish so you're probably asking yourself ramon why would i want to start ultralight fishing i only want to catch huge fish well the reason why you would want to start ultralight fishing is because even if you are throwing light lures, you can still catch huge fish. I've caught big catfish on this. I've seen uh, Ethan the Online Outdoorsman who runs mule fishing catch monster toothy critters, uh, pike I believe, on these lures and catch some solid, solid sized bass. You can catch big fish like huge trout on ultralight lures. And the other reason why you would want to start ultralight fishing, if you're even minimally considering it, is because if you have a limited amount of time, this is the fastest way for you to get on fish. If I only have 30 minutes or an hour to fish, I only bring the ultralight rig. Now, that might mean that I'm passing over big bites and big fish, but that's totally fine. When I'm just trying to come out, have a good time and catch fish, that is all I care about is catching fish and bending that rod. It's a numbers game with ultralight fishing and you can catch them in the most difficult conditions. So if there's any value for you, please give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys on the next video.